What's happening guys, my name's Private Boy, welcome back to the channel. Today we're having a look at a new game that EA brought out on Tuesday, and that game is Apex Legends. Now for those of you that haven't heard, Apex Legends is the new battle royale to finally break into this oversaturated market. It's produced by EA and it is set in the Titanfall universe. Now this was rumored to have been the replacement for Titanfall 3. We don't know the exact details of what has gone on in regards to this. But it's definitely very, very similar to Titanfall, just without the Titans within it. So seeing as it's only been out for two days, we're not going to be going into a full-scale review. I'm just going to be giving my first impressions on it. So let's just get into it. So after two days of gameplay, I'm just going to open this with a huge statement. This game has the potential to be the Fortnite killer we have been waiting for. In the two days that I've been playing, I've only found a few sort of little nitpicky issues. All in all, this game is built really well and it feels like a really well polished AAA game. It follows a format very similar to Overwatch in the respect that you have a finite amount of different specialists and each specialist has their own unique ability. Now this can be really, really crucial to winning games because you have to build your squad um, according to how you want to play, all of that sort of stuff, and make sure that you have enough support and attack profiles active. To me, this is a really fresh take on a Battle Royale. No Battle Royales ever really had this. I thought when Black Ops 4 was going to drop that Blackout would have specialist abilities in it, but it turned out the specialists from Black Ops 4 were just usable skins with no actual ability. So this just adds a whole new dimension to the game. Each specialist is obviously better in different situations. You have Bloodhound, which is the specialist that I'm using right here, that can scan areas and illuminate enemies. This is really, really good in the respect that it prevents camping uh, fairly well. If you camp, you're gonna get found out if you come across a bloodhound that knows how to use the ability properly. And his ultimate ability is a beast mode sort of thing where it highlights enemies on the move, it keeps them highlighted as long as they're in your line of sight, and it just gives you that extra edge. Another thing that's great about this game is the call-out system that they've implemented. In Black Ops 4, you could call out, like, finding different loot and have different call-outs and things like that, but it was a really, really difficult interface to use, having to press the D-pad and then use the right stick, and you couldn't keep your character moving while doing it. But in Apex, we have a really, really good interface implemented, in, whereas if you spot an enemy, you can just tap right bumper or R1 if you're playing on PlayStation and just ping the enemy and alert any teammates that might not have a mic to their position. This can also be used for the in-game infrastructure as well, like zip lines and things like that, as well as just suggesting different locations to hit. The gun balancing for Apex Legends is actually really, really good for a game that's only been out for two days as well. I haven't really run into any issues where, you know, a certain gun just dominates a lobby like the Spitfire and, and the SWAT and the Damon 2 in Blackout. That may change over time as EA do tinker with the game a little bit, but all in all, this game feels really, really balanced in gunfights. The only complaint that I really have about gun balancing is just the, the shotguns don't do enough damage. This seems to be a problem that a lot of Battle Royale devs run into, where they just can't figure out how to balance shotguns. They do sweet, sweet fuck all in Black Ops 4, but they were always overpowered when I played Fortnite. Doesn't matter what shotgun I pick up at the moment, it just seems to either do a, not enough or too much damage. I had a one gunfight in my first game playing where I picked up a shotgun, I did seven damage on my first shot and it landed for a headshot, and then I hit my opponent in the leg and it did something stupid like 40 damage or something like that. And it just doesn't seem to it just doesn't seem to be balanced properly in the respect that it's not consistent. The map is another thing that I've gotten a really good first impression off with this game. It's not an overly big map, but all of the locations are really well spread out, and there's not a whole lot of dead space between name locations. In Blackout and Fortnite, and even PUBG, I feel like in between name locations are a bit of a dead zone, and there's not really a whole lot you can do with them. Particularly in Blackout and PUBG, if you get caught in one of these dead spaces, then you're definitely going to die if you don't have the high ground. I never seem to run into this issue in Apex though. These dead spaces seem to be really well thought out. There's an abundance of rocks and trees and just general cover that you can hide behind that really gives gunfights a fair feel. There's a wealth of in-game infrastructure that really helps traverse the map as well. Every other battle royale that I can think of has vehicles like cars and ATVs and things like that that you can use to move quickly within the map. But Apex utilizes a system of zip lines. Now I know this has been done in Fortnite with both actual zip lines and rifts. I don't really know how to explain it, but Apex is of this just feels different somehow. Then there's also the fact that you can revive teammates that have already been killed. I know Blackout has a mode out at the moment where you can do this, but to be able to do it in the base game is outstanding. 
Especially at a time like this within the game where you can only play as teams of three, this feature is a godsend. So far, I've only played with one friend at a time, so we've always had a third that we weren't talking to. Nine times out of ten, that teammate will split off and try and play on his own, which is totally fine, but when you get killed out because it's two on three, this feature can be a godsend. The movement system in this game is easily the best thing though. It does feel a little bit slow and clunky, but the more and more you play it, it gets more and more intuitive. It's a very similar movement system to Black Ops 4, just a little bit slower. It's built pretty much exactly the same as Titanfall 1 from memory, but it has this really cool mechanic where if you're running downhill and you slide, you can slide all the way down to the bottom as a quick getaway from a gunfight. This is something, to my knowledge, that has never been done before, and it's a really cool mechanic that just feels new and fresh. If I had to pick a few things to nitpick, the only downsides that I can think of for this game are firstly the circles. I feel like the circles take so long to close in. This was really evident in my first win on the game after playing it for about an hour and a half. My squad was pinned in a low point within the map. We had enough cover to get by but we were pinned by two different people. In the moment it really just felt like we were pinned there forever. Having really jumped really deep into Fortnite and Blackout, both of which have really fast circles, it felt like we were sitting in that little ditch for ages and it just felt like it drew the game on for too long. The only other thing that I can really think of, and this is something super duper nitpicky, is the fact that there are two characters off launch that are locked behind a microtransaction. This is something super duper nitpicky and I didn't, didn't even want to put it into the video, but it's definitely something that the majority of the gaming community will take issue with if it's something that continues. We all know about the controversy behind Anthem and particularly Battlefront 2 with characters being locked behind paywalls and giving people who are willing to put money into the game an advantage. The in-game currency at the moment isn't too hard to grind out. This is something that is not typically EA. I haven't really played the game all too much and I had enough to unlock one of the characters. But who knows, they might end up unlocking those characters anyway and fixing this small mistake. So all in all, this game is making really good strides. As I said at the beginning of the video, this is definitely something that has the potential to be the Fortnite killer. It's cartoony enough to bring in a lot of the younger player base that Fortnite attracts, and it's built really well to attract the hardcore gamers. So I definitely think this game is worth a try. It's really well built, it plays really well, and I give it my recommendation. It's free to play, so if you've liked some of the gameplay in my video, then definitely go and give it a try, and leave your comment down below on what you think of it. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you hit a like on the video if you enjoyed it, and if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Video.